Hey guys, I just have some sort of random thoughts, things I've been kind of kicking around. Um, I was reading in First Peter the other day, and Peter says this phrase that I love. He says that uh, we are filled with a joy that's inexpressible and full of glory. And this thought hit me. How does the church express a joy that's inexpressible? How does that look? And I think that really opens up the possibilities. In that, um, you know, I've heard this phrase one time, I think it was in a Eugene Peterson book. He says that Christ plays in a thousand theaters. And I really think that that is, uh, you know, that the church is called to express the inexpressible. And that that's not something that can be prefabricated. It's not something that we can, uh, you know, take what has been and do it again and then express the inexpressible. I think that the idea that the church expressing inexpressible and glorious joy may look like a hundred or a thousand different things throughout the earth. And, um, you know, I remember one time I used to go to these meetings in a garage and this dear sister uh, in a home church you know, she laid her hands on me and she was praying and she said this thing that stuck with me now some probably 11, 12 years. And she was saying it about me, but really it applies to the church. She said, Kevin, God's made you a rainbow for those who can only see in black and white. And I really believe that's the calling for the church, that God has made the church a rainbow for people who can only see in black and white. And I think there's a, there's a subtle scandal in that that as we're trying to express the inexpressible, uh, we run the risk of having our hearts damaged along the way by being misunderstood, by screwing up, just doing something that was genuinely dumb, but not giving up. We just say, man, I really screwed up. I'm sorry, Lord, and you, we apologize if we've hurt anyone, but we don't give up. We keep longing to express the inexpressible. You know, I think the only way that the inexpressible, inexpressible can be expressed in the earth is through birth. It can't be fabricated. It can't be built. This thing cannot be built by human hands. You know, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. This thing has to be birthed. And you know, you know I look at my sons. I've got four different sons. You know, Elijah, Josiah, Noah, Phineas. Each one of those are taken from my DNA and my wife's DNA. There's only two of us, we, but we birthed four different children. And they each are absolutely whatever, 50% me, 50% Jen, 100% me, 100% Jen, however you do the math. But they look so different, and they act so different. And I think that's really the heart of God, that he is birthing something in the earth. He's birthing a genuine expression of inexpressible joy and glory and they look like children they may one may look just like Josiah the way he is you know sort of guarded and a leader and introspective and this other Elijah his name is Elijah Wild and you know he is 110 percent all the time he's yelling he wants dad to be a monster tickle me dad run around throwing a fit there's Noah he hardly ever talks but he's very deep waters there's Finn you know who's just very still, loves to be held. Each one of those is genuinely and a hundred percent my wife and I. But each one of those is genuinely different. Very unique, and I love them all very dearly and in, and in different ways. And I just want to encourage us as we're longing to express the inexpressible as the church and the earth. Uh, we need to give each other grace. We need to allow for different expressions. Um, and not cut each other off and really wound one another. But be generous to one another. Encourage one another in love. We have to learn to be relentless encouragers. Encourage the stuff that you see God is doing. You know, that was what was really cool about Simeon. You know, Mary and Joseph walk into the temple and here is the Messiah. He's only, how old? A month or two. Very young. Simeon sees him because he had been praying and fasting for the redemption of Israel. He grabs the baby in its arms and he holds it up and he begins to praise God that the salvation of Israel is on the earth. And really we have to have, as people who are a little bit older in our faith, we have to have this heart that we see the Messiah in a baby. We see the genuine work of God in an immature people. 
right? In a, in a church that's meeting at a coffee shop, we see what Jesus is doing there, that they're reaching those that no one else can reach. You know, we see Jesus in a reformed movement that's really trying to connect with God in genuine ways. We need to learn to see God in the baby. We need to have that heart like Simeon did and not tear down the things, not curse the darkness, but light a candle. Have a heart to be relentless encouragers. In Jesus' name, we're going to do this. Amen. Thank you.